Hello, nurse. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. One person watching. Whoever it is, please come into this comment section. Like, essentially, you know, it, it usually takes a good 20 minutes for anyone to actually start seeing it <clears throat> and actually coming in. Oh, shit. And, uh, but anyway, we'll just play it by here, people, and see how we go. Um... But yeah, I mean, like I said, this was actually the last minute. I wasn't actually going to go live tonight, but I thought, well, there's nothing on telly. I've got nothing else to do. And I thought, well, I didn't go live last weekend because I was out. Uh, last Friday, I went to go and see Steve Steinman, uh, Vampire's Rock, um, performance at Whole New Theatre. So I went there and uh, with Smithy and a few other people. And so, yeah, I wasn't available last Friday. So I thought, well, I didn't plan this. It's a very last minute. So whether I get anybody tonight is another thing entirely. But it's just getting something out. If Even if it's not going to be a very long one, maybe if it's only about half an hour to an hour, that's fine with me. Um, just so I can get one out, get, get a, a stream out, get a vlog streamy thing out. And, uh, yeah, just go go from there basically um, and then get back to the road and race and try and make them frequent again but uh, yeah but I'm going to hang around for about 5-10 minutes um, it is Friday evening and it's half 7 well it's actually 20, going on for 25 to 8 actually at the moment and uh, yeah in about 25 minutes, Transformers The Show starts. So I'm probably going to get stung this evening because of that. But we will see. Well, we'll just wait and see. So there is one person watching. I don't exactly know who it is. Um, but if anybody who's watching or the person that, say, that says that is watching, you're more than welcome to... Come into the comments there, and you know, you're more than welcome to come into the comments and chat, and we can have a little catch up. Just see how we go. But yes, it's, uh, I'm, I'm completely, I'm very bored, to be honest with you. <laughs> I am very bored. Um, I've absolutely got nothing to do. Uh, I was going to go for a drive earlier today. Uh, go to pretty much the other side of Hull, pretty much. Um, I was going to go and try Wendy's, Wendy's Takeaway or Burger Place. Um, for those that might not know who that is, it's basically it's an American an American fast food chain. Um, similar to like Burger King and well, similar to McDonald's and that, uh, but it's called Wendy's. And they finally opened one in Hull, but the thing is, it's, it's in Kingswood. And Kingswood, from me and from Hull city centre, is a uh, quite a big drive. It's, I believe, it's North Hull. I believe. I think I don't know, but it's it's pretty much you're pretty much right right on the end of Hull. Where, where, you know, if you go any further, you're no longer in Hull anymore. Um, yeah, it's quite far out. Uh, it's quite far out, is Kingswood, from myself. It's a good, maybe a good 20, 25, maybe 30 minute drive, depending on traffic. Um, it doesn't sound very long, but it's it's a decent it's a decent distance to go, just on a, just an off chance to try here, uh, yeah. A fast food joint, um, but no, um, I'm, I'll probably get there at some point, probably either this weekend or next weekend. <clears throat> but I am, I don't go that way that often because of it's quite far, far away uh, from well, from me. It's relatively far, um, but I don't go on there very often. And there's a real good. They've got a good cinema. They've got a good bowling place. They've got some, you know, other restaurants and stuff and shops. Um, so th th there's there's some like like 
stuff to go and check out for about an hour or so. But uh, but we'll see. And also at some point, I, I want to go and um, uh, I want man to go to our Smiths as well. But again, that's a decent drive from me as well because it's not actually it's actually kind of again the other side of Hull. It's a bit out the way. Is our Smiths? Well, yeah, our Smiths is a little bit out the way. Um, but yeah, I want to go to Smiths at some point and just have a look see really of what the what we've got available toy wise uh because like i said i've only ever been once and they did actually surprise me uh they did they i think they had like the first first couple waves and they had some pretty big figures as well some of the more expensive ones uh which surprised me uh for hull because here in hull we don't really get much we, we get it like we don't we don't get many transformers basically um we actually get quite a piss poor selection uh we now have a forbidden planet open in hull as well and to be quite honest with you our i have always wanted a forbidden planet in hull i'm very glad we finally do have one but it's the stock is shite in there it the, 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 they've got there's some stuff that I'm quite happy they've got because they've got proper Gundam kits. Um, they actually sell Gundam kits, which if I want, uh, even though I could probably get a, a bit cheaper online. Um, but the fact is, I can physically go somewhere and buy myself a Gundam kit if I wish to. Um, obviously, manga, comic books, graphic novels, uh, which is cool to see. Uh, even though there is other places in in Hull that also sells manga, HMV. Our HMV now sells manga. I know that's weird. Um, and also anime as well. But yeah. But yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, it's a bit crap, really. Um, the availability, you know, the availability when it comes to um, toys, Transformers. But yes, someone's watching, but I'm getting involved. If you wish to, it says someone's watching, but I don't know. Um, the thing is, though, it does take a little bit as well i've noticed um it does take a little bit for people to to start seeing it and obviously youtube you know to kind of promote it and get it out there but like i say i have an issue with the algorithm the algorithm doesn't really help me out a lot when it comes to what i do uploads or streams so i rely on sh putting sharing it outside on, on other things on social media facebook instagram Twitter, things like that, and I just hope somebody sees it, but it doesn't always work out, unfortunately. <coughs> Excuse me. But to be honest, I don't think anybody's actually seen my posts of me going live tonight, but that's on me. That is on me. Um, but like I say, it, I don't like repeating myself. I really don't like repeating myself. But there's there's certainly something whenever I do anything on YouTube, and it's definitely this channel as well, my John Knowles Logs channel. It it just doesn't get any. It just doesn't work for me at all at the moment. I don't know. It, Anyway, I 
But if it comes to it, if I'm only on here for about half an hour, I'm only here for half an hour. Um, I don't really give a crap anymore. I'm sick of like repeating myself about YouTube. You know, it it, it does kind of get me down, even though it shouldn't get me down because it's YouTube. Um, but it's just annoying where I'm not doing anything different to anyone else, which could be the hindrance, to be honest. But uh, but no, like other people are part of the Transformers collectors or anyone that's got a YouTube channel, they don't seem to have art. Well, the people, everyone on YouTube has certain issues with... With, with YouTube, similar kind of problems to me, but but it it I really struggle to really you know it, nothing gets promoted, <clears throat> nothing gets promoted, and nobody seems to really be interested in what I do anymore. Um, the only thing I can see as a positive is my TF Nosey channel when I upload a Transformers review, th they do do quite well. Um, they seem to gravitate the views. Anything other than a Transformers review, or any, or me doing a live stream, is doesn't always work out for me. But oh, two people are watching. Hello. If you wish to say hello, by all means, come into the chat there, and we can have a little chat chin wag. Um, two people is watching, uh, but I don't know who you are. Um, but you're more than welcome to get involved. If you wish to, um, the comments show at the end at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, if you wish to come in, it will be great to talk to you. But, uh, but yes, um, but yeah. But anyway, it's 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 a Friday. It's Friday, people. It is Friday. It is Friday. TGI Fridays. Um, TGI Friday. Um, but yeah, I just don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> I just don't know what to do with myself. Uh, I'm in one of those weird moods tonight where I don't know what to do with myself. I was bored. There was nothing on telly. So I thought, last minute, I'll do a stream like I'm doing right now. Uh, kill an hour or so, maybe a half an hour to an hour, and just see how the evening goes. Um I might watch some anime tonight. Actually, I'm in the mood for something to just occupy my mind for a, for a, for a short while. Um, yeah, it's just one of those weird moods this evening. But uh, I hope everyone's well. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everyone's good. Um, you know, in themselves. Uh, I'm not too bad in myself. Um, you know, I've just been working as per usual. Um, just you know, doing the daily grind as you do, and uh, but it's the weekend now, no more work until Monday. Um, so yeah, very happy with that. So yeah, we're just going to see how the weekend goes. Um, I might, you know, depend on the weather. Oh, yeah, um, I sorted my car out. Even though it's not very entertaining to hear, but I sorted my car out today. I washed it and hoovered it out, so that looks a little bit more presentable. Um, so, Strife Samboy, hello, Samboy. Um, Sam, yeah, so Sam says, mate, seriously, don't be so down about YouTube. It's just YouTube. Many years from now, future generations will be able to ask, who was this John? Why did he talk to himself? <laughs> that is true. Um, yeah, that would be kind of interesting, kind of like a thousand years in the future and somehow YouTube is still around and in the little nook cranny of YouTube at that time, there's still my videos there, and they're like, who is this strange person? He uploaded this a thousand years ago. Um, yeah, that would be interesting. But no, yeah, I, I know I shouldn't get down about YouTube. It's just, it's really kind of frustrating, you know, when you just, when you, when you just do something like a live stream or, 
just a regular upload and the algorithm just doesn't help you out and it doesn't prom help promote it out to those that follow you. It's just that that kind of annoys me. Um, you know, because, I, you know, just, just going back a year, I never had a problem. Whenever I used to go live, do a live stream, people were there within about 10 minutes, within about five, 10 minutes um, of me going live, and they were just there. Uh, so it did its job. The algorithm certainly kind of promoted me, and it got the attention of the people that followed me. But now it's completely flip reversal, you know. It's ridiculous, really. But, um, but anyway... But yeah, I know it's, it's, it's only YouTube, but it's just it's a little bit annoying because you know you, you basically go live. People say that they, you know, I've been told people enjoy what I do. They like my vlogs and they like my streams, and those people just don't see it until it's too late, you know. So they miss out on it, and that's that's the main that's the main reason why I'm a bit annoyed by how YouTube works at the moment. Um, it's mostly for that reason. But there has been one person watching me since I went live, and I don't know who it is. So I'm going to keep an eye out. I know Sam's in, so I think you're the second person, Sam, I assume. Um, so... But there has been one person saying in watching and not said anything. So I don't know who it is, whether it is somebody who knows me, uh, whether it is somebody who knows me or it's maybe somebody that is just popping in from outside my channel somewhere, which could be a possibility. But by all means, come in and say hello, whoever it is, that other second person. Um, and uh, Sam's here again. The algorithm is messed up. Plenty of people on YouTube struggle to get, see get seen, but even if it's one view, it's one view. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't care the fact that what the videos I do don't get thousands of views, or my channel doesn't get, it hasn't got certain a number of you of subscribers and everything, and it doesn't average the great numbers of like some channels out there. I understand, you know, I understand my channel's probably never going to be that. Um, I don't upload reg regularly enough. Um, I don't upload regular enough, and to be honest, the video themes that I do are not very original. Um, why I say that is, is because there's so many people doing the same thing. Uh, there's so many people doing vlog material. So live streams have, have actually taken over. Um, live streaming on YouTube and over Twitch and everything is kind of is the thing now it's more or less more live streaming video game streaming is kind of the where things have gone for people's attention um but i don't do twitch uh i can't be asked i mean i've heard twitch can be a little bit confusing a little bit difficult to to to, to understand how, how, you know to, to to work but i don't do that i just i just you know obviously i'm on Streamyard. I'm on StreamYard right now, and it operates through. I can do live streams through Facebook using it. I think Facebook, YouTube, and a few other places. I can use this through any any sort of internet-based source that is similar to YouTube or has any sort of upload video live stream capabilities. So it's a very versatile web uh, you know, system. This. Uh, um this stream yard so yeah that is how i do my live streams and I, I choose to do it through youtube because i know how youtube works and it's easier and that's where most of the people that know me from is on anyway um some again even the big youtuber struggle technically only 80 percent of views on the big youtube channels are actually non-subscribers just 20% are subscribed, yeah. Well, that is that is true as well, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like I say, that, that is why I said, like, the, the amount of people that are subscribed to you, um, obviously, that's not going to be the true number of, of who's actually actively watching your videos. 
Um, I mean, I've actually got a larger, I've actually got a large percentage watching me outside the channel rather than subscribed. Um, you know, even though my, on my main channel, my subscriber count has steadily increased to over 500. I think I'm about 560 now. I'm on about 560 subscribers, 560 subscribers, I think, on my TF Nosey. This channel, I'm just I'm about 160, I think. But to be honest, I don't care about subscriber numbers. And it's never an accurate number to the amount of people that, that actually watch you properly anyways. So I've never really bothered about that per se. Even though it's very nice to know that I've got that many people that, that chose to press that button to subscribe to me. I'm very happy with that. But, you know, I do YouTube because I enjoy it. I like the whole process. I like the editing process, the filming process. I just enjoy it, you know. Um, and I've been doing it for long enough now. Uh, it's kind of second nature for me now. Uh, so it's just, it's a hobby. Uh, I don't do it for a job. I don't do it for money. I don't do it as a career. Uh, I've no interest in that. So, but yeah. Sam again. That's more than me. I believe I have roughly 160 subs on my channel, uh, but I don't upload often. So, no surprise. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing is if you are somebody that was actively hoping to grow a channel to the point where possibly one day you will be able to get ad, rev ad revenue on your channel and start being sent promotional stuff in order to make money through YouTube and through ads and things like that and uh, start, you know, your subscriber count goes up into the thousands, if not millions. If you're somebody that is actively looking into that, it's I think it's more near on impossible for somebody to reach that milestone now than because most of the people, most of the big YouTubers started out around about the same time as I did on my original channel. Uh, YouTube has been around since I think oh, six, 2006, I think it started YouTube. Uh, originally, so the basically the, the the first wave of people making the YouTube channel accounts, they are essentially the OGs of the YouTube, pretty much, and it's mostly those people within like the first year, within like that first year of YouTube being around, it's them that are the ones that are the most successful that I've managed to accumulate that many subscribers because they've been on the service since about 06 or 07. Quite in, in quite a few of them. Uh, some of them may be around 09, uh, probably the latest, I'd say about 2009, 2010. I'd say anywhere between us, 05, anywhere from 06 to about 2009. That was around at that point when YouTube had, within its, was relatively quite new. Um, and, you know, I'd say within that first four years that whoever created an, a YouTube account and started making stuff, you find those are the people within that four year gap, four year thing, you find that they are the ones that are now real big. Um, but not necessarily all the time. There is a couple that have managed to make it big relatively f quite quick. But it depends on what exactly what you do, um, what your material is, what you choose to do video-wise. Um, I mean, some people make a you I mean, some people have made a YouTube channel, and they've reached a million subscribe. They've reached they've reached about like a hundred thousand subscribers in about six months. Which is absolutely insane. They managed to generate like a hundred thousand subscribers in about six months of the channel being live. I just, I don't know how they manage that, whether behind the scenes they know somebody who understands how the algorithm works. There, there is ways you can look into it. There is there is ways you can look into it what can help, help the algorithm kind of spot you a lot more efficiently and help promote you more. There, there are ways, but like I say, I'm not interested. I'm not interested of being a big YouTuber. I'm not interested in that. There's too much pressure in it, to be honest with you. There's too much pressure in it. 
Um, you have to upload between two or three times a week, if not every day. Uh, it's just exhausting. You know, I just don't have the time. Um, I just, I, I can only upload when I can. Uh, I am mostly available to upload videos on a Friday. That's film them, edit them, and do a stream. I'm only really available on a Friday. Saturdays, I can't do anything on a Saturday unless I record the video during the day in the afternoon or if I'm out and about for a walk or something. That is the only time I might be able to upload something on a Saturday. Uh, but on a Saturday, I usually produce, edit my videos on an evening. I usually film them, edit them, and upload them on the same night. I do it all at once and just upload it straight up. Um, the process could take me anywhere between half an hour to an hour, around about max of an hour in total. That's filming it, editing it, uploading it. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I, Fridays are like the, the, the main open gate door possibility of me actually being able to make a video and upload it. So I'm very limited, um, mostly because on a Saturday, I meet up, you know, Smithy comes round to mine. Um, my good friend Smithy, he comes to mine on a Saturday evening, and that's pretty much every Saturday evening. Unless, and also if there's the odd Saturday, we might be going, might go elsewhere or somewhere else. Um, like meet up with other people we know and things like that. Um, but, you know, that's life. You know, but that's YouTube, but that's the problem. I can only upload probably once a week. And that's not good enough for the algorithm. You need to be at least twice to three times, at least two to three times a week uploads in order for the algorithm to really do its job. And you need to do that consistently. You have to be com consistent. That's the key, consistency. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be consist consistent a little bit with these live streams. I want to try and make them as regular or, consi or consistent as possible. So uh, you know, I want to try and keep up the live streams because, one, I actually quite enjoy doing the live streams, even though nobody actually sees when I'm live. Uh, nobody actually sees when I'm live um, unless I promote it elsewhere. Or if I promote, or if I start mentioning it a good few days in advance, and even if I do that, I still have a problem. You know, it's it's catching people's attention at the right moment, right time. That's the problem. It's very difficult at the moment for me. Um, and it's this channel that's the main big problem. If I did this live stream on my TF Nosey channel, I probably would have about three or four people. What? talking to me right now compared to it just being Sam at the moment um, but obviously my TF Nosy channel does generate a bit more viewership uh, it does actually generate a little bit more attention to what I do on YouTube because it's got more subscribers and it's generally got you know it seems to work better my TF Nosy channel compared to this one uh, Sam again just an example, one of the channels I follow is called Austin Evan, also known as Mystery Tech. He started out at age 16 just talking about tech, and now he has over 5 million subs. Well, very good. Very good. And uh, that's, yeah. But yeah, it, it's one of those things is that you've got to be lucky. You've really got to be lucky. And also like everything in life, when it comes to stuff, you have to be, you have to look a certain way as well, you know, which is exhausting to think about. You have to look like a celebrity. You have to have the face that fits the voice that fits the attitude that fits like everything when it comes to promoting yourself and putting yourself out there, same with films and TV and magazines and all that shit, um, you know, you have to have the personality, the persona, the body, the face, everything has to fit for people to get, for people to get their, get, you know, to get people's attention when it comes to watching stuff. I understand, you know, that unfortunately that's just how the world works. 
Um, a lot. If you notice, quite a lot of the big YouTubers, male, female, whatever they choose to be, they are. I won't say all of them are, you know, but i am say quite a lot of them that are in the very high million subscriber bracket. They are quite attractive people <laughs> because they've got the money to make themselves look that good. You know, they can have Botox, they can have this done, they can have procedures done, they can have, you know, get, get you know, teeth whitening done and all that shit, you know. Um, you know, they, they can they can spend money on themselves because they're generating it, they can afford to, you know. But, uh, yeah. But the problem is as well, I think on a Friday, is a lot of people's attention is Transformers to show. Um, I know I keep bringing up those guys and the algorithm will be out. I've mentioned Transformers to show, so no worry. No, no. Because <coughs> that's how the algorithm works as well, is that if you say something specific, whether it's a swear word, or whatever you are talking about, and it's maybe talking about a set of subjects that's very bad, like anything to do with, you know, exploitation of a certain degree and all that kind of stuff. You know, if you, you've got to be very careful. You've got to choose your words carefully. You've got to formulate yourself. If you don't follow those, that formulation, then you are not going to get any ad revenue. Your videos are then going to get demonetized. Um, because there's like a special bit of software in the algorithm thing, you know. There's a bit, you know. There's a special bit of software. Um, yeah, a bit of, there's a special bit of software that basically kind of, I think it's through the processing set, side of it when, when the the video has been processed. Um, so when they go for the processing thing, like there's like 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 a phase that where it basically goes through and it checks for anything copyrighted, it checks for any swearing, whether it's appropriate for kids or not, all that kind of jazz, um, and all that kind of thing, and what kind of theme it is. It literally goes through all that, and it and it deter and so basically a lot of the big YouTubers that have got X amount of subscribers. They've literally got to jump through hoops. They've got to jump through hoops. They've got to, they've got to navigate a lot of obstacles that are set in place by YouTube's guidelines. And if they don't do that, and if they slip up when they swear or they whatever they decide to talk about as a video, they've got to be very careful of how they approach it and how they talk about it. Otherwise, they'll get demonetized very, very easily. Um, so that's another thing why I'm not interested of I'm not interested of becoming famous on YouTube or getting you know you know being a big YouTuber. That's another reason why I'm not interested. It's for that reason, you know. You know, I'm, you know, it, it's it's quite. How can I put this? You know. It, I don't know, it's, it's quite, um, you know, being a big big YouTuber, it is quite hard going. Um, you know, you've got quite a heavy schedule that you've got to keep, um, you know, uploading multiple times a week, if not every day or every other day. Live streaming possibly is another option. Um, and then obviously you've got to look the part, sound the part, and everything like that, like most things when it comes to entertainment. Um, you know, and you've got to have a clear direction of what you want to do with your channel because that's how the algorithm works. You have to stick to a certain formula. If you start going off of that formula, it gets the algorithm gets less and less helpful. But the thing is, is I've gone about YouTube. I mean, my approach to YouTube is, is I'll talk about whatever I want to talk about, whatever subject matter, whether it's, whether, whether the subject matter, you know, because I obviously my channel, my main channel and this channel, this channel's a vlog channel up for discussion, vlogs, discussion, travel, all that kind of jazz. 
that's what this channel's about. It's a more grounded channel compared to my main one. And my main channel, my TF Nosey channel, is obviously more dedicated to my hobbies, my other interests, such as collecting for toys, talking about toys, and films, and anime, and all sorts of things like that. And I've noticed the algorithm works for my Transformers reviews. It looks like the algorithm works for my Transformers reviews because it seems to help promote them more and I generate a bit more viewer viewer traffic for my Transformers reviews. But if I upload something that's not a Transformers review, then it barely gets anything. Um, so, but that's the thing is that is my bread and butter. It's always been my my review Transformers reviews has always been my bread and butter. It's always well not been my bread and butter, but you know what I mean. It's always been the thing that I've been more known for. Um, it's annoying because I like to express myself on other things regard instead of it just being the same thing, you know, instead of it just being exactly the same thing all the time, I, sometimes something might happen or I might see something that's on the news or, you know, like recently on my TF Naughty channel, I've been talking about, um, I made a video talking about Funimation and Crunchyroll situation actually two of them. I did one that was actually kind of in response to Joey, the anime man, um, his video talking about Funimation pretty much coming to an end, ending its service, and the issue that Crunchyroll's caused by upping its money, upping the yearly rate um, for the subscription for, you know, and all that kind of thing. So I did a video talking about that. The, the first one did actually quite well for something that I don't usually do. But then I did a, a follow-up video, which was more talking about physical media, um, because it's the, the there's now a discussion going around that physical media, this is the reason why physical media is so important, is because you can't rely on digital media only. You know, digital media is not reliable for this reason. You know, like they can quite easily, all the money that you invest in buying a digital version of a video game, a digital version of a film, TV series, what have you, it can quite easily be taken away from you by whoever you've bought it from or bought it through. Um, you don't physically actually, you don't own it. A digital version, you don't own it. Yes. Anyone with a bit of anyone that's a little bit savvy would be would be able to, you know, take that, you know, would be able to back that up somewhere on a hard drive or something like that. Um, somebody that's got a, you know, that's a little bit savvy will be able to kind of like you know back it up on a SSD or hard drive or a flash drive something like that, be able to back it up somewhere uh, so that it is safe and it can't be deleted unless somebody does the silly thing and presses the delete button by accident when they're opening it up, you know, can happen. But um but no but digit but when you're talking about digital uh you know that kind of thing. But anyway, so I'm, I'm going off on a tangent. But that was the whole idea of that video talking about the whole Funimation Cruncher roll thing and the whole digital and physical media. So I did two videos around that subject recently. Um so I did two videos around that subject recently, which was interesting, and I wanted to get off my chest. And I also did, I also spoke about the whole game situation as well, um, with um, yeah, game. They are there was talk of stopping in tradings um, for like pre-owned games. Uh, game are, are not allowing or they're not going to be allowing physical games uh, so basically if you go into game with pre-owned games and you wanted to kind of get some money for them so the whole pre-owned thing they're no longer going to be accepting pre-owned games at game anymore the, the, you know so they're actually getting rid of that whole side of things uh, so I did something talking about that as well so, you know, from time to time, I like to talk about other things, regardless. 
you know, it's still it's still relatively relevant to my main channel because I do talk about, you know, it's my hobbies. My main channel, my TF Nosey channel, is dedicated to my hobbies. Not just one hobby. I don't just have one hobby. I have other, other interests as well that are, you could label as geeky or nerdy. You know, video games, uh, films, movies. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of all that. Um, and I also do my toy reviews, Transformer reviews. But, uh, but yeah, it's uh, YouTube really is a thing to... It's difficult to navigate, really. And, you know, to just get anyone's attention is very difficult now. But to be honest, it's... You know, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, he's still saying somebody's watching, and it's somebody's been watching since I started, and they're just what they're just there. I don't, I don't think Sam's here anymore. Sam hasn't. Sam's not commented for a little bit. So I don't know. Sam's not commented for a little bit, so I think Sam's maybe had to pop off for whatever reason. Um, but somebody's been there, but hasn't come into the chat. So I don't know who that, what that is or who that is. Or if it's just a glitch with a stream, which could be. I don't know. But yeah. To be honest, it's a very quiet evening. Um... Uh, It, this is very dis disconcerting, really, because I love doing these streams and nobody's there to watch them um, that I know enjoy. I know there's other things involved in it, you know, like life. You know, they've got lives as well. Oh, Sam again. Sam, update your PC and we can game. First Modern Warfare 3 Survival Co-op. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to try and... Me and my dad are going to try and update the, the update the PC at some point. I don't know when. Um, to be quite honest with you, I can't quite afford it at the moment. Because um, obviously parts for computers are not cheap. Because, like I say, I think it needs a complete overhaul, to be honest. It, obviously, it needs more power, for one. Um, better graphics card and all this kind of jazz. Just for it to be able to operate Windows 11 or whatever it is, the, the new Windows. Um, but, yeah. But, yes... What's going on up here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this evening, to be honest, this live stream, um, this live stream, obviously, it was kind of a bit, bit last minute. So I've got to kind of take that as a thing where, obviously, it was very last minute. I only promoted it about roughly an hour before I started. Uh, I decided to go live. Uh, I started posting it on my social medias about an hour ago. So really, it's only had about, well, now it's been about nearly two hours. Now and a half since I um, but yeah, so yeah, um, yeah. Oh, 
I've lost my train of thought again. Lost my train of thought. Anyway. So, I will send you a link. Basically, my PC. Yeah, your PC. I don't have the money for your spec, Sam. Jesus Christ. I don't think anyone in the right mind has the money for your spec of a computer. Um, but anyway. But yeah, it's just, you know, it's just boring. <laughs> But yeah, oh yeah, there we go. I lost my train of thought there. Um, yeah, I've got it back. I think. Um, what was it I'm talking about? I just have it on the on the edge of my on the edge of my brain, and it keeps slipping away. Um, oh, it's gone out of my head. Gone out of my head. <sighs> gone out of my head. <sighs> I'm in one of those real weird moods tonight, you know, where I just don't know what to do. There's nothing on telly. I'm bored. So that's it. I was talking about last minute coming on the live stream. There we go. Uh, so yeah, last minute. Uh, so yeah, I was obviously this is all completely last minute for me. Um you know, I posted on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter that I was going live tonight on my, on my socials. Uh, and I only did that about half six ish. Um, so, about an hour before I came live. So, it's not very long for it to circulate and people to actually start seeing it. Um, and actually, when if, they're, if they are available to actually watch and everything. So, it's. Yeah, it's but Transformers the show don't seem to have that problem. But, but obviously they have more subscribers, um, and they obviously they they have a dedicated theme of what they're doing on that on that channel for their for their streams. And obviously it's doing a bang up. They're doing a bang up job in order to gravitate that audience that they still do every week. Um, which hats off to them. Hats off indeed. Um, but anyway, I'm not gonna. I'm trying. I'm not gonna. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna try and not let it get to me too much. You know, it's nothing to really get upset over with YouTube. It's just, it's, it's just annoying. You know what I mean? It's just annoying. You, you do something because you know. Obviously, you do something because you enjoy it. You know, you enjoy it yourself. In yourself, you enjoy it. It's something you enjoy doing. I enjoy doing. And you know the people also equally enjoy what you do and what you know what you share and talk about and stuff, streams, video reviews and stuff. And when the algorithm doesn't help you out with getting it out there to those people that you know do enjoy and you know always try to watch it when they can or get involved, you know it's just annoying for, in that standpoint with me. That is the main thing that annoys me with it, why when it don't work properly, is for that reason. Is the is obviously you know for the people that do enjoy these and what I do. Um but it's weird, it's like I never had like going back literally a year, one year, going back a year, and my live streams were absolutely fantastic. There really was, there was the most fun I've had on the internet in a long time, you know, catching up with people I hadn't spoken to in a long while, people from the States, people from Canada, um, obviously other parts of the UK, um, other other friends of mine I don't really speak to that often uh, or haven't spoken to for a while, and some of my TFN peeps and all that, you know, that sometimes pop in now and again. And, you know, I used to get that without a problem. And that and on this channel as well, not my not just my main channel, this channel. I used to generate a decent crowd, and I used to get a nice bit of conversation in the comments going. And that's only going back a year. Um, but now it is near impossible. It absolutely is completely impossible to just get anyone's attention now. Absolutely impossible for me. 
Um, I just don't know what I've done, or if I, and I don't think I have done anything really, but it's something. I know I haven't done anything. It's just YouTube just doesn't like my channel. It's just not non-existent for it to pick anything up. That's the that's the thing, isn't it? Sam, uh, was it something to do with Transformers? What was? Oh, uh, my train of thought. Yeah, I was I was saying about I lost my train of thought. No, um, well, I was talking about Transformer reviews a bit, but no, I've, I remembered, I finally remembered what I was talking about. Basically, I was I was talking about me last minute, you know, I was I was discussing like last minute um decided to go live tonight and usually when when i usually when i go live i start promoting it a couple of days before so i i might kind of maybe on a wednesday tuesday or wednesday i might mention it start putting putting up a few posts so it gives people a few days to see it and read it and then i'll do a follow up one like either the day before or, or on the day of it just to remind people I'm going live at this sort of, sort of time. And that usually helps me out. If I do it systematically like that, I don't seem to, well, I still have a problem, but I still get a, at least a couple of people uh, watching and commenting it and then that. Um, but no, it's, you know, that's basically how I go with that's you know, basically that Sam again are the cats present uh they was well Susie was she's now gone downstairs or oh, she's on the landing uh, she was on the bed a moment ago literally while I've been live she's literally been on the bed but she's literally just jumped down and probably gone to get something to eat or something But yeah, Transformers, the show's been on now for about 25 minutes. Um, so you never know. It might start picking up soon. You know, I might be able to get, you know. But like I say, my channel, a lot of the regular people that follow me on my TF Nosey channel don't follow me on this channel. So obviously they're not really going to get notified of me going live on here because... They're not subscribed and they don't have the notification for it set up. So I can understand that logic of them not seeing my live streams. But um, I think what I might do is I might see about making live streams again on my TF Nosey channel. Um, I don't know. Because I used to do live streams on my TF Nosey channel and I used to also do like additional live streams on here. So like a bonus live stream now and again. Um, I did, I used to, it's a, so I've done live streams on both my channels. Um, mostly on my TF Nosey channel, I do the special TF Nation, the pre-TF Nation stream. Um, and that usually goes down quite well with people. Um, people seem to quite enjoy that, the TF Nation, the pre-TF Nation streams. Um, and I managed to get a few people on and everything, so that's real cool. Um, I really enjoy doing those. So I do, uh, not, you know, I did do, I have done live streams, obviously, on my TF Nosey channel. Um, but I also, you know, but it's obviously, um, the reason why I brought back the live streams on this channel was because there's very little for me to talk about in n normal uploaded vlogs. So I just thought to kind of just start making these live stream chats and chat with people, you know, just have a conversation, talk about whatever. And, you know, it's killing two birds with one stone. It's one, it's a live stream at the time. And then obviously it becomes a watchable actual video afterwards. So I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm getting a live stream out and I'm also getting a video out once it's no longer live. So... That's why I, just, I chose to do live streams on this channel again because it, it is getting at least something out each week, each Friday. Um, and then when it comes to my 
main channel, I can just systematically record something and edit it together and upload it, and there we go. Um, but yeah. Sam. Bring them forth. Allow YouTube to see them all in all their fairiness. Uh, that's, yeah, I don't know where they are, but they're all downstairs, I think. They're both downstairs, I think. They're, all, they're not in my room anyway. Well, anyways, I think I might come to an end. I think I might end this in about four minutes. That'll bring me to an hour since I was live. So that'll bring me to a nice closed off hour, which is not bad. It's fine. Um, but there's literally no one, unless it's that you know, unless it starts picking up. I mean, very soon because, like I say, Transformers the show they they start at eight and they finish at nine. Around about nine o'clock. So I'm starting to think maybe I don't know whether to maybe start doing my live streams on this channel a bit later, but then when I do it too late, I start getting into troll territory. <laughs> Cause it's really weird because obviously I've done live streams at different times. You know, sometimes I've gone live a bit earlier, sometimes I've gone live a bit later. And any, it's usually anywhere, if I started to go live from about 8 or 9 o'clock at night, <clears throat> which I have done in the past, you, stay, you seem to generate the wrong traffic. You start getting the trolls and people commenting bullshit in the comments. Um, so that's why I shy away from going, going live too late, because I can't be asked with trolls, basically. I mean, who's got time for that shit, really? Um, no one has. <coughs> but um but anyway what can you do but anyway Oh, by the way, Sam, if you're still there, was uh, what did you think of my videos talking about the whole Crunchyroll Funimation thing and the whole physical media video I did as well? What was your thoughts on them? I'm intrigued of your thoughts because you, you did say to me you were thinking of doing a, a response to those videos. So what uh, what was your thoughts on those videos and will we be getting a response from you possibly on your channel anytime soon? Uh, Sam, um, do you have a Holy Grail for a DVD box set? Oh... Oh, I grew up for a DVD box set, man. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember what I used to watch that hasn't had a proper DVD release. Um, I would probably say what I've always wanted to own is the original Shaman King series. I do actually own it now, but it's bootleg. It's not an official box set. It's a bootleg. Um... But I would like an official one with the English dubbed intro trailer to it still. Because the one I've got, it's it's obviously it's a bootleg, but it has the Japanese opening. But it's English dubbed still. Um, but I would love a Shaman, the original Shaman King, because obviously they brought Shaman King back, the Netflix series. They brought it back. As a reboot, but 
I just have a soft spot for that series. Uh, and it never got a actual release because the, the, the people that dubbed it, the company that dubbed it, went under. And a lot of the shows that they worked on, uh, the, the rights were lost. Quite a lot of the rights were lost. And so only so many of them have managed to get the right. The other companies have managed to get the rights back for certain things like card captors, for instance. The original English dub is gone. The I think the rights to the original English dub for card captors is gone. But I mean, to most people, that would be that's a good thing rather than a negative thing. Um, because obviously the English English dub for card captors is not very good. Um, it's iconic because I do like the casting choices. I think the the, vo the voice actors, I thought they did quite good as their parts, but the original English dub for card captors, um, yeah, the the English dub for card captors original dub is. It changes the narrative. It changes the story quite a lot to what it was supposed to be. Uh, so basically, Card Captors got picked up for a new dub, and it did actually get a full physical release, um, which I do have. Um, the only thing is, I'm not a big fan of the new dub. You can't have everything, can you? Um, I like the original dub because I like the acting choices, even though it messes up the, the narrative and the story because they changed it quite a lot in the original English dub for card captors. But with um, but the read the, the new dub was done by Funimation. I I love Funimation. I've I, well, I love I, I like their dubs. They do a good job when they come to dubbing a, an anime. Um, they do a really good job. But saying that, I think they did. I think there was. I don't like the. I don't like the voice actress choice for Sakura in the new dub. I think. I think they could. There's there's other choices they could have gone with for Sakura that would have probably suited her better, in my opinion. Um, and also the love crush interest, uh, basically her big brother's but uh, her big brother's friend, um, his his best friend, um, Sakura's brother's best friend, um. Who's also, you know, Sakura has a crush on him. In the in the original dub, it was actually a male voice actor playing that part because he was a he was older than her, but he was actually in high school. He was he was at the at the age of about to graduate from school, sort of thing. That age. Um, but for some strange reason, <laughs> for some strange reason. In the uh, redub, the new dub uh, for Card Captor Sakura, um, they went with a female voice actor for a obviously older boy character, and it just doesn't work because obviously, yeah, no, it, when 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 boys are young. Then obviously, you know, having a have a female voice actress to play the kid version of a character is a good idea because obviously, it, it works better. But then obviously, naturally, as a guy, as a as a boy gets older, he his voice deepens and everything. So it makes sense having a male voice actor, you know, carry the carry the voice along. That's just me. That's just I just see that as natural because that's how. That's how it works with men, you know. We, at one point, at some point, puberty happens. That thing called puberty, and we start getting deeper voices and start sprouting strange hairs everywhere, um, and all that kind of jazz. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, but nice. No, I honestly, but yeah. I, I, I need to watch Card Captors properly because I haven't actually watched it all in its completion. Card Captors Sakura. 
but it's just I know I can take the English dub off and just watch it subtitled, but again, I'm not a big fan of subtitle. So I don't know, I'm at a loss. Even though I want to watch it because I, I love the series, but the, the new dub, I don't like the casting choices as much in the dub, the new dub. Um, or the newer dub, should I say. But uh, any other box sets I can think of. But yeah, so original Shaman King, you know, the original Jetix, the, the original Jetix airing of, of, of Shaman King with the English dub or, uh, intro, that would be one of my dream purchases because it's an iconic English dub soundtrack. And I like the voice cast for all the characters, even though it was again, a relatively bad dub because, again, it changed the narrative of what Shaman King was about again because of the whole censorship at the time with English dub stuff for Japanese animation. Uh, but no, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I can't think of anything else off my head. But, um, oh, Sam's back with another one. Sam says, do you have a Holy Grail collectible? Non Transformers. Ooh. Do you have a Holy Grail collectible? Not Transformers. If you're talking about money, has money is no option. Uh, no, no, should I say uh, money is no problem? Should I say uh, phrase it that way? <coughs> uh, so yeah, if, if money was not wasn't a problem for me and I could afford whatever I wanted, I would absolutely love as because they have released this. Um there is a company out there that made this actual thing I'm about to talk about, and I would absolutely love it. If if I had if I had my own place and it was a, I had a big room, collectible room collection room or something i would certainly have this pride and place in that room um a life-size t800 terminator statue statue from judgment day terminator 2 judgment day t800 endoskeleton um statue I think was it Sideshow? Was it Sideshow or somebody like that that did it? That, that some some company that did a huge life size T eight hundred endoskeleton statue that was fully posable, came with its gun, came on a big massive uh, pedestal, and it was like a huge showpiece, like collectible. I absolutely fucking love that. Um, you know. I'd also like to have a. I'd love a actual Chucky doll. I'd love a Chucky doll, uh, either the good guy doll before he goes all twisted after he gets all disfigured, doesn't he? Um, I'd love a proper Chucky doll. Um, that is like one of I'd absolutely love it because I love Chucky. I love the character. I love those films. So I'd love a Chucky doll, a proper Chucky Chucky doll, not not a little. Funko Pop version of it or something, a proper Chucky doll, proper good, good, good guy doll. Um, I I just, I just love the character, so I'd absolutely love to have that in, in, in a, you know, part of the collection somewhere. Um, what else would I like? I like an Ed Two Hundred Nine from Robocop. Um. I'd like some Wolverine claws because Wolverine is my boy. He's my favorite of the is my favorite mutant X Men character. Um, next to Deadpool and that. Um, but yeah, that's all I can think of top of my head. Sam again. Yes, Sadio. I've seen a custom one that actually walks and talks. It is terrifying. Sweet. I will, if I had the money, I would buy that. No problem. (sighs) 
But yes, yeah, Sam, um, like I said, what was your thoughts on my videos I did? Um, the whole Funimation Crunchyroll situation at the moment. And me talking about the whole, like, IGN doing that article talking about physical media and it, you know, it needs to make a comeback and that. What's your thoughts on all that? And will we be will we be uh, lucky to see a response video from you some point soon? Maybe. Or would you like to share a, like a brief summary thoughts of your thoughts on it while we're on now? If you don't have to, if you don't have to, I'm just as saying for conversation's sake, really. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> ah, Smizno. Hello, my friend. Smizno says, I, I would love a life size R2D2. Oh, yeah, man. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. Now you're absolutely talking. Oh, yeah, I would love a full-size R2-D2 as well. That is cool. Sam, the issue with physical media versus digital in my mind is simple. Physical does not need the internet. No, it doesn't. That's, yes. No, it doesn't. It doesn't need the internet at all. Uh, unless it's a interactive, unless it's got interactive bonuses. Um, I remember... That they don't happen very often nowadays, but there was a phase with usually with kids stuff like, um, like DreamWorks and Pixar might or Disney might have done like what well, have like extras on the disc, have like you know, d extras on the disc, but you needed an internet connection for them to be act, uh, to activate them uh, to be able to do that. Um, that's the only time where you needed an internet source to on a DVD. The physical DVD, but they don't do that very much anymore. Um, I'm kind of glad because the kind of it's no real point, it's just mostly just a couple images or maybe a little game or something they might have done for the kids. But, um, but yeah, that is absolutely true. Yeah, did the, the, the thing is, is you know, I'm not completely against digital, yeah. Smiznaz in, hello my friend. Uh, yeah, physical media I prefer massively. Um, you can't, you can't put a hundred percent trust in digital because as what's happened with Funimation at the moment, I don't know if you're aware of this, uh, Dave Smizna, Um, but yeah, obviously Funimation, the company, North American company that dubs anime, Japanese animation. Um, they've basically, uh, basically, long story short is they're basically kind of, they're shutting down their streaming service, um, and people that have already bought digital versions or a series, an anime series digitally <coughs> from Funimation's site, they're no longer going to be able to yeah, they're they're no longer going to be able to um, gain access to the stuff they bought, the the digital versions of stuff they bought, and then Crunchyroll comes out by saying they for in order f f so w the stuff that people are going to lose out on and unable to access because Funimation's shutting down, um. Crunchyroll have decided to up their prices of their yearly membership to, to have a Crunchyroll account just for them to be able to gain access to the stuff they lost again. So it's like a middle finger to the people that are losing out with Funimation because of the whole merger, Funimation and Crunchyroll merger. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that is one reason why digital is not trusted, for that reason, because... You don't physically own it. You don't own it when it's a digital copy. You don't own it. It's basically on a server. That server could get compromised in some way or it could get shut down and you would lose it. 
<coughs> but if you had it physically in hand, in on your shelf, you don't have that. You don't have that risk. You know, that's why physical's better. Sam again, digital needs the internet, and depending on the connection, it may be poor quality. Exactly. Smizno, I love physical media. I love album covers. Yeah. I love physical music. I love physical music. I love physical films still. I still buy films, Blu-rays, series, the odd series, and, and video games. Now, video games nowadays, right, video games nowadays are simply nothing more than an access code on a disc. I understand that. But I still like the idea that I physically have this game. It's in my hand. It's not the digital version, even though it technically is, because it's just the access code on the disc. That's all it is. But it's still you have it. You went out. You exercised your legs. You went to the shop. You picked the thing up off the shelf. You paid your money to the nice man or lady, whoever it be on the counter, and you brought it home. And then you have to wait about five years for it to do its update and do its thing. Then you can play it. Um. So... But yeah, but I still prefer physical everything. <laughs> Sam, interactive bonuses. One of, one of the Harry Potter DVDs had one. It was for a live Q&A with the cast. So naturally, the bonus content is no longer live. Yeah, it won't be now. Smithsner, when I was a DJ, I would, I would remember the feel of a tune of a tune by the sleeve. Oh, right, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, I've sent the vid. Okay, I'll give it a watch once I'm no longer alive. Um, but yeah, it's I love vinyl as well. I know obviously Dave Smith knows he likes his DJ stuff, he likes his uh, DJ decks and vinyl records and that. Um, I do as well. Um, I have a little collection of vinyl records, I have a little vinyl player, vinyl record player, record player, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I, I love physical, I love physical, everything physical. I prefer physical comic books. I don't like e-readers. I understand, now, I don't have a massive problem with e-readers to a point. Um, they're a good idea, but I prefer to have the paper form, whether it's a book, comic book, graphic novel, whatever it is, I prefer to have the physical thing in my hand and read it as you do it's you know it's the feel of the paper you know that feel of the paper and you're moving the pages you know it's just the whole process you know i prefer it um and it's same with everything else i, I love i love my you know obviously records proper records or vinyl it's the best sound quality ever you know it's just I love the sound quality of a record, a proper record. You put the record on the turntable, you put the needle down, you hear the little little crackles and pops and everything because it does its thing. <coughs> I absolutely love it. But yeah, physical, and I do believe we need to stop depending on streaming and digital only. I don't say we should stop digital media completely. I mean, it, I mean, obviously, streaming services are a decent thing. It's just the whole digital process of buying a digital version from somewhere. You, if if some if something was to happen to the server, um, like so, it gets compromised in some way, or, or something happens then you're going to lose access to what you've just purchased or everything you've purchased digitally through what through that service. Um, so that's that. So you don't physically, you don't own it. That is, even though you've paid money for it, you paid hard-earned money to buy that, the digital version, but it's not actually yours. You're paying full price for it as you would a physical version, a physical copy. Sometimes maybe a little bit cheaper, depending, but still you are paying money for it. But 
you know, in, in in reality, digital versions, you are pretty much just renting it from from the place that is providing the service for you to buy that digital version of it. You know, you are just renting it from them. Uh, so if they choose to end the service, so say if Prime Video was to change or you know be renamed as something else or it gets pe- it gets bought out by a different company and that company doesn't want the prime video thing anymore they that you know this is happening all the time in digital media the the digital spectrums all over the place there's things being bought out left right and center disney's buying literally everything now bloody discovery have I saw something that Discovery have bought the purchase of have, have purchased the rights to the Grand Tour and Jeremy Clarkson's Farm series for Prime Video. Uh, Sony have purchased the, the physical distribution rights for Disney's stuff, all of Disney's library, everything Disney owns. Sony now have the distribution physical copyrights. For everything, so they oversee the printing of the discs, the printing of the artwork, distribution to retail. Everything is now under Sony. So that's just happened. Um, but then, like the whole digital spectrum's all over the place. I mean, there's going to be a point where, as well, with streaming sites, it's going to get a lot more expensive, as well. It's going to get a lot more expensive with streaming sites because. Prime Video very recently just upped their per month. I was paying, I, I think I still am paying £10 a month for Prime Video. Um, but my dad said he read something that it was going to go up to about nearly £15 per month. And the reason for that is they've now put ads on some of their programming. So some of the stuff that they have on there, that's maybe prime original stuff, they're now putting f- between 25 to 35 second ads throughout the throughout the, the whole thing of it. So you will get like a small ad break gap every 15, 20 minutes or whatever something's being on. So you have to pay an additional nearly five pound more a month to get rid of the ads. Netflix are bringing that in as well. And they're also upping the tariff per month tariff for Netflix as well. It's going to get to the point where it's going to get streaming services are going to become too expensive for the normal everyday person to afford because of the whole, the whole thing where they're now upping that everything's becoming more expensive, you know, the whole, you know, everything's becoming more expensive. Streaming services are having to put the prices up for this reason because, you know, projects are more expensive. But what they're doing is they're, they're pushing people out. You know, if you put, if you put the price up per month price up too high, People are just going to say, sorry, but I can't afford that. I'm just going to cancel. So you're going to get more people leaving the service because of the price hikes. Crunchyroll's looking at price hiking as well because of the whole Funimation complete merger into... So Funimation's pretty much been completely absorbed into Crunchyroll now. So everything is now Crunchyroll. That Funimation... What was once Funimation. So... They're now going to be upping their, their their tariff for that to gain access to the Funimation library. It's ridiculous. This is why digital. I so I'm a bit against digital for this reason. Price hikes for the for the luxury of being able to watch this series and that series. Um. So price hikes is one. On it, uh, not ha- enough. Whatever you buy digitally isn't actually yours. It, you are pretty much just renting it from whoever, and it could quite easily become compromised, and you could lose access to it completely. That's another thing I don't like about digital media. Um, so, yeah, I prefer physical 100%, all of it. All of it. Physical films, physical music, even though I do have a... You know, I do obviously. I, I do listen to music li- uh, 
through the internet. You know, I have a um, Spotify account. But I use Spotify to basically just discover new bands um, and obviously playlists. So, like, if I go for a drive, because obviously cars nowadays, again, have gone digital. You need a digital source for you to be able to listen to music now or you need to have some sort of a flash stick or a, a, like a hard drive or something with uh, music on it that you can plug in with a USB into the car or you through Bluetooth connection with my car, I have to use Bluetooth connection to connect to Spotify and I can then, or, or um, Android music or YouTube music, whatever it is. I, I use, I use Spotify, but that, you know, so if I go for a drive out and I want to listen to music, I have to use an internet source to do that. That it doesn't have a CD player anymore. Cars haven't had a CD player in there for maybe about five over five years, maybe ten years. They started phasing CD players out in cars quite a while ago. So physical still very much apparent, still very much appreciated. Uh, it needs to. St- <laughs> It's still appreciated, but there is still this margin where people are just too dependent on digital services. And it's becoming to the point now where they're too greedy. These people, these people that own these streaming services, they're too greedy now. And they're starting to price hike everything. Yeah. It's not good. But this is why I prefer physical, because you, you go out, you buy it, um some point down the line you might say oh I've got, i fancy watching a film oh i remember i've got this i've got that you go upstairs you get the dvd you bring it down put it in the player and there you go and you can do that for as long as you wish until you wish to get rid of it which you know you can go somewhere maybe to a charity shop with it or cex or something even though they rip you off as well but anyway um you know there is ways <laughs> You know, if you don't want it anymore. Well, anyways, folks, I'm going to go now. Um, you know, it's been nice to speak to Sam and Smizno Dave. Uh, he's been in. Um, but I'm probably going to go very soon. Um, but I have been on for nearly an hour and a half now, so that's not too bad. Yes, but Sam's back. Sam says, <clears throat> Netflix, Disney, all saying you can no longer share accounts. If you do you will be charged extra or even have your account suspended. Yeah, I've heard about Netflix doing that. I wasn't quite sure about the Disney one. But, yeah, but I was just saying Amazon Prime, they've started ads, um, and you have to, uh, if if to get rid of them, you have to pay an extra, like, four or five pound more per month to have no ads. I've opted out of, I mean, I've... I've still got my Prime Video account, uh, my Amazon Prime account, but when it came up with a notification saying about the price hike, you know, would you like to go ahead and pay da 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 this per, per month, pay this amount per month to have no ads? I just went no because I'm not paying an extra five pound just for them to remove the ad, you know. So I'm still paying what I've always paid. But eventually, it will. This is the thing: streaming sites is becoming very, very ridiculous. I understand the reasoning for Netflix because a lot of people were kind of saying, "Oh, there you go, mate. I've got, I've got multi functionality with my Netflix account. I can, you know, you know, more, you know, my my net my Netflix account. I can have up to about three people watching at once. I think I'm about three or four people. So. I could be watching it on my phone. My dad could be watching it downstairs on the TV. Um, you know, somebody else in another bedroom or another room could be watching it on there. So I can, I think I've got about two or three pet usability with mine. <coughs> with my Netflix. <coughs> the reason why I did that, the reason why I've got one what's where more than one person could watch it simultaneously is because sometimes my dad my dad has a look on Netflix to see if there's anything to watch, like a film or a series. 
So if I wanted to come upstairs and you know, leave my dad watching whatever, and I put my PS4 on, put my Netflix on, you know, put my Netflix on, and uh, so I, I can watch something on Netflix as he's watching something on the, on Netflix at the same time. So that's the reason why I did that is so that my, you know my dad if he if he finds something or he's watching something and he sees something on Netflix, he can do so. Um, so yeah, so that's the reason why I opted out opted for that. But it's it's getting to the point now where it's getting very ridiculous. You know they're. The pricing the little person out of it now, you know, Disney Plus is still quite cheap. It's only like five pound a month, which is quite reasonable uh, at the moment. But Netflix, that's something like nearly fifteen pound a month now. Um, I don't know, but I think I think it's gone up a fair bit over the last few years. Uh, Prime Video. Is well, I'm. I think I'm paying ten pound a month, which was the launch price, anyways. It, it, it's always been about ten pound a month. But now, if you want, if you don't want ads, if you don't want the ads showing up, you have to pay an additional three, four quid or something like that to get rid of them. Which I think is a big fucking cheek, to be honest. And it's the same with Netflix because obviously Netflix are thinking of bringing in ads as well. Um, and you have to pay more to get rid of them. So it's ridiculous. It's just fucking greed. And this is why I'm a bit against digital media because these streaming sites are well aware of it now. These streaming sites are well aware of what's going on. And they are quite adamant of killing physical. And this is why. Because people people are becoming like mindless drones now. They're, they're a lot of the younger generations, like the younger generations, they are too much. Obviously, they've been brought up on digital only. That's all they've really known. But obviously, I'm from a time. Obviously, and I can now sound like I'm an old man, don't I? Um, but I'm, you know, I'm only thirty four, but I'm still quite young. But I remember a time when there was no computers, when there was no mobile phones. Everything was analog, analog TV, you know, analog gaming machines. You know, the, I remember a time where, you know, cassettes, VHS, video cassettes, cassette, music cassettes, records, mini disc players, CD players, um, you know, I remember a time where everything was very analog still, you know, through like the the nineties and the early two early thousands when things started to change. Um I mean I, I didn't get my first mobile phone until I was about ten. I think I was about nine or ten years old when I got my first phone. And it was a Nokia it was it was a Nokia, but I think I can't remember the code of it. It was it was kind of like a just like a just like an oblong e sec like a cylinder like a cylinder kind of shape rectangular and it had like a little external aerial at the top um and uh that was my dad's phone uh so he, my dad gave me that phone that that was was my, what used to be my dad's he gave me that one and then he got himself a new phone so basically my first phone was a hand me down um, and it, it did me well, you know. It was just phone call and text, obviously. And then my second, the, the, the second phone I had was an actual brand new one. It wasn't a hand me down; it was a brand new one, and it was a thirty three Nokia thirty three ten, which was my actual phone. My parents bought me brand new. I think either for my birthday or Christmas one mm -hmm. year. Um, and then after that. Uh, again at school, I with my own money, I saved up and bought it myself, and I bought the Motorola Razor, which was my third phone. Then I had a, a Sony Ericsson flip phone. Um, I have I had a Siemens a Siemens BenQ mobile phone with the MP3 player built into it. Um, I had a Sony Xperia phone. Um, 
not off, it's not on a touch screen. It was it was like a little brick, but it was more. It, oh no, it was a Sony Walkman. It was a Sony Walkman phone. Um, I've had one of them. I've had. I've had a fair few different phones, really. Sam boy, enjoy your evening, mate. I will. Thank you very much. But anyway, so I'm going to go now. Thank you ever so much to Dave Smizno. Thank you very much for his for him coming in. Uh, thanks to Sam for being with me for quite a majority of the stream. But uh, but thank you ever so much. Uh, I know there has there was one person watching right from the start, but. I don't know who that was. Uh, so whoever that was, thank you very much. Uh, Sam's obviously been in for quite a while and knows this Mizno. So thank you ever so much to anyone that just came in for us for a moment. Uh, but anyway, so take care of yourselves, everybody. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy time with your family and friends or whatever you're planning on doing this weekend. You know, enjoy. And I shall see thee and hopefully talk to thee very soon. I'll be back with more. I'll be back next Friday with another live stream. So live streams are going to commence. I will come back on Friday, next Friday with another live stream. And I will be uploading. I would, I might try and see about getting a Transforms review out this weekend as well. Um, but yeah, keep your eyes peeled. More stuff coming. Thank you very much. Take care of yourselves. And I will see thee and talk to thee very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.